So last time when we were talking about chronic pain and reducing it, we started with the basic skill of somatic resourcing, being able to connect with your body in a safe way to develop islands of safety in the body. Now, if you haven't looked at that, then you, you might want to click the link that I'm going to provide with this video uh, to bring it to the next level. Now that you've got the wires connected on the inside, now that you've got nature's energetic exhaust pipe opening up, uh, fight or flight energy discharging, now, now we can uh, do the sort of mind-based top-down work of connecting more deeply with you, integrating the emotions, sensitizing things that need to be sensitized while regulating and uh, relieving the strong emotions that have not been dealt with that are worsening your pain, that are perpetuating your pain. So uh, the way this is done is we're, we're gonna use parts work. As long as your body mind wires are connected, this works. If they're not connected, you're just playing a mind game with yourself. And so truly uh, you, you need to have some connection with the body. That's a tall order when you've got chronic pain because it's this dangerous prospect. You go to connect with your body and you have a whole bunch of protective processes inside of you pushing your mind out saying, no, don't look here. It's just gonna make it worse, you know, which is, which is true. I mean, to, to oversimplify it a bit, I mean, you, you hyperactivate uh, the connections that lead to your pain when you're looking at it, right? And so uh, that's why we do the somatic resourcing. We develop islands of safety in the body. Stuff starts uh, relaxing as, as you feel the spike and heart rate, rate and then the relief, uh, the tension and then the expansion and release. So uh, when it comes to what's left, you're either looking at a pain response that we're going to talk to as if it's a person, or you're looking at the barrier between you and your pain response. If you go to look at the pain and your mind keeps pushing you out, uh, that's that's the thing that we talk to. And uh, just to, to simplify this a bit, uh, there's there's a lot more detailed explanation I could give, but you're you're turning a feeling into a person. You're treating a neural subsystem as it's a, as if it's a person for the sake of disidentifying from it and creating a space for self-compassion for creating a space for the release and integration work. You're releasing old built up fight or flight energy protective responses. Uh, and what's actually integrating is the purified version of the emotion that has never been dealt with because it was surrounded by all this toxic survival energy, all this fight or flight uh, that was kind of acting as a wall, keeping parts of you subsystems separated. It served you for whatever reason when it first came up. Now it's no longer serving you because uh, now it's it's uh, keeping your body out of alignment. It's keeping systems from collaborating together that are now ready to collaborate together, most likely. So uh, if you've already connected with your body, I'm going to invite you to just make sure that you feel connected with your body enough to proceed. Uh, it usually helps to take a deep breath in and a slow breath out just to uh, really activate the flow of sympathetic, parasympathetic work. Then turn your attention into the shape of your body. You breathe, you turn the attention into the shape of the body so that you're aware of where you are and how embodied you are or aren't. Now, when it comes to where the pain is, go ahead and uh, consider where it seems to be popping up. And if it's not the pain that you can look at because your mind keeps checking out when you try to do that, talk to the thing that's uh, pushing you out. Guess where it is. You just look for a location, whether or not you can find one. Uh, and as you're breathing, send a message in your mind over to that part of you and just thank it for showing up. Thank it for seeking to protect you. If it's your pain, like your primary pain, it's seeking to warn you that there's something wrong. And so thank it for just being there. Uh, and if it's a thing that's protecting you from looking at the pain, I'll well, just thank it from try for trying to protect you and for whatever it did to help you keep on keeping on when it first came up. And uh, you don't want to confront it right away. You don't want to you don't want to uh, invalidate it. You want to validate it. You want to unshame it. You want to have a non-resistant sort of communication where 
whether you get a feeling of, oh, thank you for validating me and noticing me and your body relaxes a little bit, or you get something that's more like a pushback, suddenly all your feelings wall off and, you're, and, and you can't feel anything uh, talking back to you, like I'm not gonna let you mess with my program, or even a hostile response, like I can't trust you, I'm angry at you. Whatever feeling comes up, your job is to welcome it curiously, wondering, what you can do to be more fully with this part of you. And so if it's a if it's a soothed, trusting response, if things calm down, there's a sense of validation on the inside, uh, that's that's a great time to just ask what it needs. You know, and and you're not asking so you can get deep truth or insight, though it's pretty likely you'll get at least some of that. You're asking for the sake of creating an exchange of energy and information in your body like we started with the somatic resourcing exercise. So you're pretty much asking, you know, what is it that you need? What is it that you want? Whatever comes up, whether it's a feeling, whether it's a thought, whether it's an image, whether it's all of the above, you just thank it. You you acknowledge it and you kind of send a message back saying, hey, this is what I'm getting when I when I ask you, you know, what you need or what you want. Then uh, if it's if it's a pushback response, a shutting off or a hostile pushback saying, hey, don't mess with me, uh, then what you do is it's still a response. Uh, you you are going to do some trust building. How do you do that? Well, you just maybe through apology, you know, let's assume that there was a time when you pushed forward with what you needed to do and this part of you had to take over. So there's some abandonment there, maybe a feeling of betrayal. And so uh, without, without you know, bowing down to it like it's some kind of a deity that you must obey and without uh, ignoring it like you may have done in the past, uh, deep breath, send a message, say something like, I'm sorry uh, that you have had to take over because I wasn't ready to handle it before. I didn't even realize all the work you've been doing in here. So I, I'm sorry about that. And notice if there's a bit of softening or some tentative trust. At that point, well, what you can do is, is you can take the apology further. Just say something to the effect of, hey, just so you know, currently this is the shape of my body. This is where I feel the pain and just kind of send an image in your mind. And then send a message like, uh, you know, the, the feelings that you have that I haven't dealt with, I wonder if you could just try me out a little bit, send a little of that feeling to my current body so my body can process it and you can see if I'm trustworthy now. You can see if it's worth it, if it actually relieves you. And then notice what happens. Do you get a surge of feeling? Do you get a tiny little bit of feeling? Whatever comes up, you send a message of thank you. You welcome it. If it feels a little bit nasty or shameful or or fearful, you just take it exactly as it comes. And it is your job as the conscious bridge between your parts uh, to, to basically be unafraid to believe that whatever feeling comes up is temporary. It will process because your body is an amazing uh, emotion processing machine. And that in the wake of that processing, there will be something good that comes up from within you. Sometimes you get a run of negative feelings before the deeper, richer, positive feelings start to emerge. You are doing the emotional work in the service of creating flow in a body that's designed to relieve you from pain and uh, to self-right and self-adjust. So let's say, for example, uh, you have pain in your uh, upper back and neck area. Uh, you'll, you'll take a deep breath as you're breathing out. You're sending a message down into the neck and upper back saying, hey, you're trying to protect me. Thank you. And whether you've got to build some trust or whether you can go straight into it, what you're asking for is, can, can you please let me know? what it is that you need you're you you're 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 stuck protecting me sometimes the the message could be something that wouldn't seem directly relevant to your pain but is absolutely directly related to your emotional underlying needs sometimes it's a real clear message like i need hope or i need peace you know or or something like that i i need 
someone someone who actually listens and understands instead of ignoring me. It could be something really directly related to your emotional needs. So go ahead and pretend, yeah, that's that's uh, what the need is behind the pain. And what you do is you you just validate that and say, okay, well, uh, the fact that you haven't had that is hard. You know, you you probably got some feelings about that. Here's the shape of my body. Here's the length of me. Here's the breadth of my shoulders, the length of my arms. Send some of that feeling that you've got trapped in there into my body. And I'm just going to breathe it in and wait. And so you just kind of wait and wait and wait. And if it's not overwhelming and it comes up with a little surge and release, just thank it. Yeah, thanks. That was tolerable. That was that was just a bit. Did it feel better? And if it's like, yeah, then great. Ask for more. If it's like, yeah, but I can't trust you to handle it. You can just acknowledge, I'm sorry for the times that I, you haven't been able to trust me. I'm so sorry about that. Can, can you try me out again and see if this time I'm ready? See if it's worth it to you. Sometimes you get some pretty strong feelings as you build the trust and, and uh, connect through apology. And so uh, just welcome the feelings and trust that there's another good feeling behind it. Now, recognize this part of you, as soon as the pain goes away, it's used to just going asleep and hiding, most likely. So what you want to do this time instead is say something like, OK, there is another feeling coming. As soon as the feelings start calming down, you're, you're no longer having big surges of feeling. You send a message saying there's another feeling coming. Uh, I'm, I'm, can you stay with me? Can you watch with me while this other feeling comes and I'm going to meet it? And uh, a lot of times, whether the next feeling is a positively leaning one like peace or a negatively leaning feeling like uh, anger, sadness, shame, revulsion, you just welcome it. You just welcome it and believe that your body can package it up. Now, if it gets overwhelming, um, you might want to send a message inside briefly saying, hey, I got to take a break, but we'll get back to this. And you take a break. If it's something that you get ferocious responses every time, chances are you need a different kind of work and you need somebody to process it with you who, who actually knows how to process trauma or uh, some of the deeper attachment wounds. Uh, because it, if, it's, if it's too ferocious to handle or your system isn't ready to handle it, there's always something that can be done to help your system be ready. Uh, sometimes that even means uh, some medicated assistance from somebody who's a psychiatrist or and actually understands trauma work and overactivation. Um, sometimes it means, uh, you know, going to a, a therapist who who can help you or somebody who is who's able to like sometimes people will even go to like shamanistic or energy healers who can feel with them and they're effective. They actually uh, instead of overactivating people more, they actually help people package it up. And so when it comes to uh, making the feeling into a person and talking to it, what, the reason why you want to do that is it not only disidentifies you from the pain or the protective response uh, so that there's a space for compassion, uh, but it also, the, the character you create, the more you talk to it, the more you create this character, this character that you're creating gives you shielded access to something that you can't access directly on your own just by thinking about it. And so at least most of the time you can't access it directly on your own. You know, um, if you're an expert meditator, maybe you can. <laughs> maybe all you have to do is think about the feeling and bring it up and ask for it. It's there. Uh, if you're if you're uh, not uh, already able to do that, this is a way of getting um, access to just that feeling or just that set of feelings connected to it. And so talking to the feeling, what you're looking for is not insight or information that's true. You'll probably get that, but that's not what you're looking for. You are looking for a deep exchange of feeling. These portions of your nervous system, they're like they're they're like little people that don't grow up on clock time. They grow up by connecting with other people. So you're taking a neural subsystem and you are connecting it to other parts of you. And you're doing it with a deep exchange of energy and information that is felt. If it's not felt, it's not happening. If there isn't uh, it's the 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 variable heart rate, the the going up the polyvagal ladder where you go from tension to activation to release to tension to activation and release, and then the emotions coming through and integrating, then then you're not having the deep exchange. Your stuff stays in a holding pattern. Your your issues are not resolved. What happens when you're doing it really well is that you'll notice 
uh, that some of the sensitivities that had to be blocked through your protection against the pain, uh, the sensitivities come back. You're going to be able to notice uh, things that you are actually doing to your body that you didn't realize you were doing to your body to make it feel worse. You're going to be able to notice needs that you were unable to notice before. And sometimes it's as simple as the need to like drink more water or adjust your position in your chair more often, or this hunger for uh, high nutrition foods or exercise. It'll be needs that start to come to the surface. Your body is self-adjusting, self-writing. Sometimes it's a need to get distance from a toxic relationship and figure out some strategic way to do that. The consciousness comes first if, if you're not going to just reenact it in your next relationship. So, so recognize your emotions and your physical pain and uh, spinal processes. These things are not separate. They are connected. The work that you're doing with a, a competent doctor or other professional uh, is going to be complemented by the work you do on an emotional level. And it is kind of an interesting thing that sometimes uh, some of the medical issues will resolve because the self-writing system is now freed up to do its work that it was uh, organized to do. So best of luck in taking your relief to the next level, learning how to treat a feeling like a person's for, for the sake of this deep emotional exchange and this integration work. Parts of you living in yesteryear, growing up into the present through uh, energetic connections, nerve uh, cells firing and wiring in new ways. So, so your system is flowing and moving the way it was organized to do. And best of luck.